right, so today in this video for Scratch, we are going to take a look at the concept of variables. Um, variables, I'm just going to hit start here and play. Variables are the idea that there are going to be times when you're coding when you want to be able to track information, information that changes over time. Um, you know, for example, if you were at a baseball game or something uh, and you needed to keep score, a uh, variable is a good way to hold information for you, such as things like a score, um, so that every time someone crosses um, home plate, for example, you get a addition or an added number to your score. And this is an example here that I'm showing, which is basically every time the mouse and the cat collide, I just have them randomly going in different places. And every time they collide, the cat gets a little bit bigger um, and a little bit slower, and the mice count goes up. And it's programmed to go up to 10 mice, and once it hits 10 mice, um, it'll actually just freeze. You'll see it there, it just reached it. Uh, and he says, I'm full. So you've gotta be able to create a way for Scratch to collect information somehow and store it somewhere for use later. And that's exactly what a variable does. So this project here is a project without variables, and what I'd like to do is walk you through how you actually go about making them. So for example, in this project, I've got three sprites, a ship, a rock, and a star. And as I play, I'm going to use my arrow keys, and I'm going to try and catch the stars but avoid the rocks. And notice that every time I touch them, I even touch a rock, everything disappears as I touch them. So there's no impact, there's no game really, because nothing's happening in terms of a score. We don't know what happens if a rock hits you, what happens if a star hits you. So in order to make this a little bit more interesting, we're gonna create variables. So if you take a look here at the left-hand side where the um, coding categories are, if we click on variables, you'll notice that you have a button that just says make a variable. And I'm gonna make this variable actually on the spaceship um, sprite just because it makes sort of logical sense to me that that's the one I want to carry the scoring. I'm going to move these off to the side here and these are just my movement. These are the ones that tell the spaceship how to move left and right. But I'm going to come to the variable section and I'm going to click on make a variable. And I'm going to call the variable in this case score. You can name it anything you want. And here's the thing, I'm going to make it for all sprites so everything gets affected by this variable in the game. Um, you could make a variable, there may be purposes for you to make a variable that affects only a given sprite. Uh, in this case, the way the game works, I'm going to have it affect everything that's going on in the game. So I'm just going to leave it the default for all sprites. And I'm going to hit OK. And what you'll notice is, now that I've done that, a new variable gets created with a set of uh, code blocks for that variable. I could create multiple variables depending on the kind of project that I'm doing. In this case I just need one called score. You'll also notice that on the stage the score variable appears up in the top left by default and you can drag that wherever you want to. In this case I'm just going to leave it there. Um, and now I got to do something about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my events and I'm going to pick when fly click. So at the beginning of this project when someone clicks on the green flag, what do I want to happen? So first thing I want to do is I want to set the score to zero because if someone were to play this and let's say play uh, up to nine points and then stop and then start again, it would be at nine points again. So in order to make sure that every time you start it over again, you get reset to zero, you have to include the set score to zero code block. All right, well, in addition to that, I want it to be affected by rocks and stars. So I'm going to go to controls and I'm going to bring in an if statement because I want it to say if you touch a rock, um, take away a point, and if you touch a star, give me a point. So let's do the star first. I'm going to go to sensing and under sensing there is this touch block. Okay, and the touch block allows you with the drop down menu to pick another sprite on the screen. So I'm going to pick stars. And as I said earlier, if I touch a star, I want the uh, star to give me a point. Okay, so I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to say change score by one, meaning 
give me a score every time I touch a star. Right? Well, I want it to do, to do the opposite with a rock, so I'm going to control click my set here. I'm going to duplicate, and I'm going to put a second set below. This time I'm going to say, when you touch rocks, give me a negative score. Take one point away. All right. So now, so far I have basically, if you touch a star, you get a point. If you touch a rock, you get a point taken away. And then I, ne I need one more because I want it to be able to end at some point. I don't want to just play forever. So I'm going to say, um, if, let's see, I want to say if you reach um, 10 points, um, stop. Okay, so in order to do that, I have to bring in an operator. And now I could bring in this operator that says blank equals, meaning score equals 10, um, but I'm actually going to choose instead if score greater than. The reason I do this, uh, and I'm just going to say greater than 9, meaning when it reaches 10 or more to go ahead and stop, and the reason I do this is because sometimes in games that work really fast, um, you might bypass 10 and 11 really, really quickly if you're running into a couple of sprites so close together. And so this ensures me that if it hits 10 or 11 or 12, by the time it registers that, it will, has, it will have stopped. So I'm going to come over here. I still need to say what is greater than 9. So I'm going to grab score. So if score is greater than 9, I need it to stop. And the way you, the way you stop it is you go to um, control and you say stop all. Now, I, 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 that's fine, uh, but I would want to notify the game player that it's ended. So I want it to say something. So if I go back up to my looks category, I can say something like, um, congrats, you win or something. Okay. And I'm going to make, I want it to stay up there for a little bit, meaning um, I want them to see that for a second before everything gets stopped. So I'm just going to say, wait a second. Okay. And uh, that should work. Let's let's see how this goes here. Okay, doesn't look like it's working. Why is that? So the reason it doesn't work, I, hopefully some of you have clued in because we did this in the last video as well, is in order for this um, these if statements to keep working, they need to be nested inside a forever block. Okay, so I'm going to come over, get my forever block, and I'm going to put it. So look at look what's happening here. When you drag your forever block, you can it tells you kind of gives you a preview of where it's going to go. And I want it to go around all of these if blocks. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit that, and now let's give it a try. There we go. Now it's starting to work. You can see the score up in the top right hand corner there. Now, again. You needed a forever block to ensure that the if statements keep working. Otherwise, once they're executed, then it's just it's just finished. And let's just ensure we have eight right now. Let's see if we can get to ten and ensure that this works. Boom. Congratulations, you win. Okay, so that's a simple way of using variables uh, for things like keeping score.